everybody. I wasn't going to go live until I got like a, a tripod or something, but I decided that fuck it. I'm going to try to set it up and show you how I make some mac and cheese because it's Thanksgiving and what's Thanksgiving without mac and cheese? There's a little bit of a controversy uh, with mac and cheese and how people make it because it can be shit or it can be delicious. So, oh, sounds like my oven's ready. Um, I have my turkey in there. It's looking beautiful. So I start off with a couple tablespoons of butter. Because every good mac and cheese starts with butter. Nice hot cast iron pan. My water is boiling. I'm a fan of cavatappi noodles. You can go old school elbow. I really like these ones. They're like the crazy little corkscrews. They just they have little ridges that soak up all the sauce and just kind of, sorry, I still have to finish doing my hair so we can get to dinner. Um, so your, your water, you have to salt it like the ocean. Otherwise your mac and cheese is going to turn out really fucking bland. So I'm going to salt that real good. And I want to say this is like 12 to 14. No, these ones are eight to nine. I always go on the lighter end because it's going to be sitting in the sauce and I want it to soak some up. Going with about half a box. There's not going to be a lot of people at our Thanksgiving and there's always a ton of food. So I'm going on the lower end. All right, now that those are in there, my butter's melting. I forgot to pull out my flour, so let me grab that. Because I used about two tablespoons of butter, I'm going to use about two tablespoons of flour. Equal parts, butter and flour. Let that cook up a little bit. I should mention that I made bacon in this pan this morning. I left a little bit of bacon grease in there for some extra flavor. So, just cooking that up. Add a little seasoning. I like to do a little bit of onion powder. I would usually chop up onions, but I'm kind of in a hurry. A little bit of garlic, some paprika. Paprika gives it a nice color too. Some pepper. I'm a huge fan of pepper and macaroni and cheese. So season it according to your liking. And of course some salt. Don't want to overdo it with the salt because there's salt in the water with the pasta. There's salt in the butter that I'm using. Um, but again, you want it to have some good flavor too. A lot of times macaroni and cheese taste bland because there's not enough salt, there's not enough pepper, there's just not enough going on. It's, you know, just a lot of milk. Which, by the way, I use heavy cream. So, I have this on low. Don't mind my dirty ass oven mitt. You can see, it's got like a nice golden brown color that's mostly from my cast iron with the bacon grease. But I want to get the raw taste out of the flour. Keep uh, stirring that around a little bit. I'm going to kick it up the heat. It's been a couple of minutes. Let this get bubbly. It's tough to see on there, but it's bubbling a little bit. Add in my cream. Going with about two cups ish. Honestly, that's what was left in the fridge. So, give that a good stir.
Now with the butter and the flour and the cream, it's going to thicken up a little bit. So I'm just going to let that heat up and do its thing. Get this floating hair off of me. Pasta, a good stir. Oops. Sorry about that, y'all. That's why I need that damn tripod already. It's just grabbing my whisk so I can whisk out any lumps that form. Once that's nice and hot, I have a little bit of cream cheese, a couple of tablespoons that I let sit out and get to room temp so it melts in there real nice. Adds a tanginess. Now my cream's starting to boil, so I'm going to turn this down. But the cream cheese helps thicken it up and just uh, kind of gives it that little bit of kick that I like when I eat mac and cheese. I hate when people make it with like American cheese or Velveeta and it just tastes like, like a block of fucking cheese. It's gross. I should probably watch my swearing. I've been trying to be more conscious of that. It's not working very well for me. So you can see, it's getting to be this, ooh, I don't want to spill it everywhere, but it's like a nice, thick, nice, thick sauce. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I don't know if it's true, but from what I've read, if you add cheddar cheese to a sauce that's too hot, it kind of gets that grittiness. So I always uh, turn mine off and just let it cool for a second. It doesn't take long. You still want it hot enough to melt the cheese, but the heat from the pasta is going to help too. I have about two minutes left on my pasta. In the meantime, I'm gonna double check my thermometer. I don't know if you guys know how to set these old school thermometers, but if you do ice water, should be 32 degrees. It's so tough to see on there. It's not, so I can twist this little nut at the bottom and turn it to 32, and then I'll make sure that my turkey is temping properly. I can move this. You want to see the turkey action? It's my turkey. And it looks like it still needs a little bit of time in here. It's not wanting to focus. But anyway, it's at about 150. So. I'm gonna let that cook a little bit longer. Food safety, everyone, especially with all this seminal of bullshit going on. It's the timer for my pasta getting ready to go off. I try to save a little bit of my pasta water just in case the sauce is a little thick.
Cheese. I always mix cheeses. I'm going with a triple cheddar and some Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack is really smooth and creamy and it melts nicely. So I'm going to go with probably a little over a cup of that fish. Hey, you can see Monterey Jack, right? Didn't mean to do that. Same thing with the cheddar. So if I melt down in there. Hope there's enough room for all my macaroni. Very stringy, cheesy sauce. I'm gonna try to work that all in. Gonna give this a taste. Mmm, pretty good stuff, you guys. Dump in my pasta. Drain a little bit more of that water. I don't need it. Sorry about all the stuff in the way here. I said once I get that tripod, this will be so much better. It should be here on Saturday, I believe. Yeah, there's a cheap little shot. Talk about food porn. Ho, ho, ho. The sauce looks a little thin, but the noodles are just going to soak that up make it extra thick and delicious. I'm gonna add some breadcrumbs on here, some extra cheese, and then I'm gonna throw it underneath the broiler for a minute, get it nice and crispy, and take it out for Thanksgiving. So, I have some garlic and cheese croutons. Take some of these, smash them up, use them as breadcrumbs. Instant breadcrumbs, and they're way better seasoned. Add some extra of my cheddar. And for some crisp, crisp I'm gonna add some Parmesan on top too.
slide. I'm going to add some Asiago because it's what I have in the fridge. Feel like I'm at Olive Garden. Is that enough? Never enough. All right, some more breadcrumbs on top. There she is go under the broiler to get all that nice and crispy after I make sure that my turkey is to temp and uh, that's all it's my mac and cheese see you guys later